Welcome to the Happiness Minute. Our episode today is called Lupus and Dance, Balancing Health and Passion. Join us today as we explore the broader topic of living with an illness and having to do physical activity. We'll discover the healing power of dance through Farzana's incredible story. Also, in this episode, our guest candidly shares her journey of living with lupus while passionately pursuing her love for dance. Through her story, she provides information on how to manage lupus symptoms. So tune in to be uplifted by her health, passion, and perseverance. Hi everyone, we're back in the Happiness Minute and we have a very special guest today and her name is Farzana who is from Singapore. Hi Farzana! Hi Anna, thank you for having me. <laughs> so first of all, um, can you introduce yourself and your business? Sure, um, I'm Farzana. I run a dance brand here in sunny Singapore called the Daisy Group where we specialize in Daisy dance classes, um, aka Indian dance classes, where we do all kinds of dance styles uh, where we explore uh, the Indian realm. So it's not just Bollywood, but we do South styles and folk styles as well. Yeah, oh, excellent, excellent. Um, so do you work with uh, adults and children or uh, men and women as well? So it's across the board? Yes, uh, it is all an inclusive brand. We work with adults and children uh, and we actually like to specialize in the beginner levels. Those who are non-dancers, you know, those who probably never tried dancing ever in their lives and they would like to pick it up as a skill. And this is the safe community for them to come to because I understand it could be very intimidating when you are entering a dance class, especially yeah. when you are in a different stage of life. Maybe you are in your 30s or, you know, you mm -hmm. you want to find people that you can relate to, a class that you don't have to be so worried about stamina and pace. So yeah. we are the perfect place for you if you're starting your dance journey, regardless of your age. Oh, cool, cool. Um, so our um, talk today is very different. Um, so we're going to be talking about lupus and dance. Um, so my very first question for you about regarding that is, what is lupus? Can you tell us more? So there are two kinds of lupus. Um, one is systematic lupus uh, and another one is lupus nephritis. So the one that I have been diagnosed with is lupus nephritis. And lupus basically it's an autoimmune uh, condition. I do not like to use the word disease. <laughs> so it is an autoimmune condition, meaning your immune system, which usually protects the body from a disease, right? Uh, it turns against your own body. So your immune system basically attacks you instead of fighting the virus or fighting the disease that has attacked your body at the moment. Uh, this causes harm to organs and tissues, uh, especially the uh -huh. kidneys. So the ones that I've been diagnosed with are the kidneys. Uh, it results in inflammation, there's swelling uh, in... More severe cases, the scarring of the small blood vessels that filter waste in our kidney. So very scientific stuff, but to put it in short, it's basically you do you do you do not have a very strong immune system. Let's just say that. Yeah. Yeah. So when you were diagnosed with this one, were you a, a, still a child or as an adult already? I was diagnosed with lupus when I was twenty five, and that would be last year. However, the symptoms and everything that I was going through was actually way earlier. If I'm honest, um, it started probably when I was a teenager and it started with PCOS, polycystic um, ovarian syndrome, right? Yeah. So it started with one thing and you know how when you don't take care of like the very first issue that you had, yeah. it starts to accumulate and it becomes something else, right? And we have uh, that problem sometimes, we often brush things aside thinking that, oh, it's just probably something small, yeah. you know. Maybe it's just fever. Maybe maybe we're just throwing up because we ate something wrong. But I think the one thing I've learned is, you know, go for your checkups, you know, quickly go and go for mm -hmm. it. Do not do not brush things off just as something like, oh, okay, I'll be better tomorrow. So I, will, I had it, uh, I had PCOS from young. And I think from then on, uh, jumping to last year, I actually had a bit of arthritis as well. I could not lift up 
things like the kettle or even like a like a comb oh, to brush okay. my hair like everything hurts the joints were swelling um i could not eat i had lost appetite and because i could not eat uh i had lost a lot of weight as well like huge amount of weight i had lost a lot of hair all my hair were falling even without me combing it so I had all the symptoms, but we did not know what it was because mm. in Singapore, there's not really much discussions about autoimmune conditions or diseases even. So we had no idea what was happening to me. We were roaming around for like three months, trying to find an answer, going to different hospitals. And finally, uh, we went to a specialist and he did a few more tests. And right from there was when I was diagnosed with lupus. So even when he uh, first told me that, oh, what I had was lupus, my first reaction was, Cool. was that <laughs> because we didn't have much education here about it it was the very first time I even heard about such a condition so that has been the journey so far into the diagnosis which was last year however I do feel like okay it probably started way before way that before. we yes. just didn't realize yeah. it yeah yeah so how does it impact your dancing then um when you have this condition Yes. So with lupus and with, I feel, any autoimmune condition, um, rest is really super important. And we, once again, we don't see that as very important, especially when you are running a business, you know, um, th- you don't really have any working time, right? It's not like a nine mm. to five where you are like, okay, 5 p.m. Yeah. I work stops, I get to relax, right? So we work round the clock most of the time. The timings are pretty yeah. odd hours. Uh, and with lupus, I think, I had to prioritize my rest a bit more. Mm-hmm. I had to really tell myself that, look, the recovery is way more important than the execution because without the recovery, I can't execute anything. So it was a whole mindset shift. And when it comes to the physical aspect, because my job is pretty physical in terms of classes. Yeah, um, that's right. And right, yeah, and right now, I'm the only one that's teaching still. I haven't really gotten an assistant teacher yet. So because of that, what I usually do now is before every class, I try not to have any physical um, activities throughout the day. Uh, I try to make sure that right before my classes, I have complete rest. And after my classes are done, what I do is I do a cold and a hot compress. So I switch it up. So there are days, I call it my maintenance days, where my ah. feet um, are literally submerged in ice. You know, we let all the inflammation down. And for certain muscle uh, soreness, uh, I do hot compress instead. So I'm usually seen with these two and... Yeah, I mean, the the recovery is something I had to pay attention to in order for me to be able to even function the next day. So it's very unglamorous things that goes on uh, before and after a class that people don't really get to see with um with the autoimmune uh, patient, I would say. So there is a treatment for it then, um, but you just need to like do like um a lot of other like things, like you said, co- co- uh, compress and that sort of thing. Um. Okay. Yeah, because um, your your joints hurt a lot um, with any physical activity you do, oh, yeah, whether yeah. it's gymming, you know, or whether it's dancing, any t- physical activity you do, you are going to get body soreness. Uh, but I think with an autoimmune condition like lupus, where it also affects your joints, uh, you feel it double. You know, it's two times maybe more painful, or the soreness yeah. is twice as bad. So you do have to really be quite religious in terms of taking care. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you will find me with a cold compress or a hot <laughs> compress. Or sometimes it's just something as simple as knowing what to eat after a class and before a class. You That's know how it. they say your food matters with what you take. Um, Eating stuff with protein helps you with recovery. So, I really had to pay attention to all of that if I wanted to function well for my next class the very next day. Yeah. Um, so what types of dance do you find um, helpful um, to manage, uh, for example, for managing your con- your condition? I think, and I mean, this is a really good question because it's something where I've been thinking about for a while now um, about how I could also help people with similar conditions like mine yeah. because, again, we thought that in Singapore, we've never heard of it, right? But the moment once I shared my story on my um, social media platforms, I've had a lot of women actually reach out to me saying that, oh, they actually also have this condition. It's just that they didn't tell people about it because no one really understood what it was. So the moment I had all those people reach out to me, I realized that, okay, maybe you know we do need to 
talk about this in the community about dance because yeah. any autoimmune condition that you have you do need to include movement in your lifestyle correct you know? yeah it's just that it may not be at that level like maybe what an average person intense, can do right? and that's fine yeah. yes exactly so intense um workouts or activities i would highly not recommend it because the thing about a condition like lupus right you really have to maintain your stress factors and i feel like with very high intensity workouts or dance styles, mm-hmm. you put that extra stress on yourself, right? Because, okay, you need to have the stamina, you need to have the strength, you need to be able to keep up with the class. So I would not recommend any high intensity workouts or dance styles for someone with an autoimmune condition. In fact, I would actually urge them to go for choreography-based classes. If dance is their thing, instead of going for like Zumba classes, I would highly recommend you to go for choreography. Because uh-huh. the difference between a fitness class like Zumba versus a choreography class because Zumba is very high intensity at times. Yeah. In an hour, you are probably doing 12, 13, 14 songs and it's yeah. like back to back one after another with very yeah. minimal break in between because you need to have that. It's for your cardio. However, yeah. for choreography, it has the same impact for fitness because you are still moving. The steps mm. could be different from one to another. But the pace of the class is much slower. And if you were to attend a beginner choreography style class, right, um, the pace is much slower. You'll be able to understand movements. And so I think, you know, you get to enjoy it a bit more. You And I think it's very important because it's supposed to be stress relief, you know, not added on stress. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so you should definitely do stuff that makes you smile. So I would recommend uh, folks to go for beginner style choreography classes instead of jumping into something like Zumba at least you know when they're starting to build up their their health journey again okay so um you mentioned something a while ago about um food um you know like in terms of how to manage it properly um so how do you uh use food then to manage your um condition um are there specific food that you shouldn't be eating um or specific food that actually helps as well um what are those mm-hmm. um for different autoimmune patients right the symptoms differ and what works for me may not work for someone else yeah, like we right. all could have very different limitations so just putting that out there first like this worked for me it may not work for someone else always check with your doctor first about what you can do and what you can't do what you can take and what you can't but for me, at least with lupus, I cannot have any raw food. So stuff like sushi, um, I can't, I can't have it. Uh, the food has to be fully cooked. And for now, I'm still in that stage where I'm trying to figure out what triggers me. So uh, certain foods that I ate, like anything to do with red meat, I do notice that when I do have it, I have a certain level of um, itchiness around, around the lips area. It's not so bad. But at the moment, that's the only thing that I notice when I do have red meat compared to uh, like chicken and fish. So that's one. Uh, another kind of diet that I have gone on is that I do have to watch my sugar intake because sugar causes a spike in your body. So you do have to watch that as well. Um, another kind that I definitely have to pay attention to is to include fruits and veggies in like my everyday um lifestyle which is something i did not pay attention to before <laughs> this i was a no veggies girl no veggies. don't put any greens in my food like completely no but now i have to you know we don't have a choice and i think that's like the funny thing about very stubborn humans like myself right like until it's made like a like a compulsory thing you don't do it <laughs> yeah so yes i have to include that in my diet now i i watch what i eat and I think with diet, it's more of paying attention to protein for me because for me, it's all about muscle recovery and I want to have yes, a good recovery right. rate for my everyday lifestyle. But apart from that, I don't um I don't deprive myself of anything. It's all about proportion. And it's all about yeah. watching what you eat, especially coming yeah. from an Indian household. You know, Indian food is like amazing. Yeah. However, if you have <laughs> yeah. that every day <laughs> without balancing it out with, you know, good stuff like fruits and veggies, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, you know, cause some problems in your in your system. So I think it's about watching what you eat. Uh, I know a lot of people uh, with lupus, they've actually gone full vegan. You know, they be- oh. they become completely vegan and that has helped them. So which is why I say it, it differs for different people. It depends. People, you know? yeah, yeah, you're right. Actually, yeah. it depends on yeah. um, 
at what stage as well your condition is, I guess. Like, you know. Yes, absolutely. So we talked about food. Um, and now I want to talk about how do you take care of your mental health um, because of this? Of course, you know, you feel like stressed sometimes just thinking about this. So how do you take care of your mental health then? Yeah, man, I, I think, I think I've always said this, that even with lupus, when people do ask me, how do I manage it? Um, I think the physical aspect was much easier than the mental aspect because mentally, um, at least for someone like me, who's always pretty much been active and even dance wise, I was able to dance a bit differently before this, um, where you, you weren't so worried, you know, about getting an injury. So at that point of time, I could dance more freely and I think I moved a bit differently. Cut to now uh, with the restrictions or the limitations that I have, that has affected me quite a bit mentally because uh, my confidence went down. I was yeah. uh, very wary about trying out new things, about um, maybe even going out with like a group of ladies like for networking, for example. If let's say they mm -hmm. wanted to meet up for brunch uh, or dinner, I would be worried about going out for that brunch or dinner because I'm worried about okay if do they have um options for me to eat or am I going to be like that very difficult eat um eater in the group you know because I have to watch what I'm eating so that used to cause me a lot of anxiety uh and it wouldn't be good because you know you are you're yeah. thinking about it you're overthinking and once I started retracing back about my stress factors uh pre-lupus I was thinking to myself, okay, what causes all my stress? Like, why are we so stressed about to the point that, you know, it has actually led to this shutdown as well uh, of the entire body. So it took me baby steps, you know, and I think the most important thing I first did was to be around people that were also for me. So meaning, um, you know, if I were to go out with a group of women, those are the people who I know are my people. So I don't need to have the anxiety mm -hmm. or stress. Uh, on me you know there are people who are understanding they know what I'm going through so I don't have to worry about okay uh, maybe I can tell the ladies look guys um I doesn't matter where we go just make sure there's this this, this options in the menu yeah, you I know see. like I used to have so much difficulty to even communicate that with people because you don't want to look like okay are you doing too much you know are you being yeah. too difficult you're worried about that so I started to cut off a lot of people um from my circle those who um, added on to my stress instead of making me you know feel stress free because when you go out with friends you want to be stress free right yeah they, they just relax not yeah. Yeah. Sure relax, you want. Yeah. yeah exactly yeah. exactly so I started doing that and once I started doing that my mental health actually improved quite a bit so it goes to show you know the people that you hang around it, mm -hmm. they are super important for your well-being like super super important because the moment when you hang around like the wrong group of people, you hear what they what they are saying. You know, you you become one of them sometimes because you are always in that mix, and that then affects how you think about yourself or about what you do. So I started paying more attention to that, and once I paid attention to that, my mental health actually started improving. So I took care of it in that manner. And when it comes to physically, I told myself that look, this is. Baby steps, we have to do it. There's no other yeah. way about it. And that was us then. And this is us now. And there's nothing wrong with it. You know, people change. We evolve. Life happens. Things changes. So it's a constant pep talk that I always have to tell myself. And because of that, post loopers for a long period of time, I actually refused to dance in front of the camera oh. because I was that insecure about, okay, you know what? I don't dance like how I used to. It may not look as, you know, as cool as what you see in like the other reels yeah. and TikTok videos. So it, it affected me quite a bit. So it, it took a while for me to get back in front of the camera and started performing once again. You mentioned people that um are around you. So what other types of support system um you have in place now to help you continue um dancing uh, with your condition? Yeah, um of course my family has been there from like day zero you know they were the ones who saw me going through the entire symptoms mm -hmm. and we went through the whole um stage of being confused and wondering what's happening to finally finding out they were also my biggest uh, support in terms of me getting back to health uh where i never entered the gym before this i was never a gym person i didn't want to lift weights and post lupus uh, my brother signed me up for like a gym membership 
and he um basically hooked me up with one of uh his personal trainers who are also his friends so they were the ones who helped me you know to gain back my muscles and strength training from like very 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 small simple workouts that wasn't very scary for me and cut to now i am a regular gym goer so i go to the gym about two to three times a week now for strength training so that was one of the support I have, which is my family. Another one is my partner, um, who has been with me for four years. Uh, so even he has had a hand in making sure that mentally I'm doing all right, you know, very supportive. And I think the important thing is he reminds me to take things slow. Because when you are running a business, mm, 10,000 yeah. things are there in your mind and you want to do it all like now. Yeah, in one know? day, yeah. So, yeah, it's all in one day, like all the projects, you're like, no, you want to do it now. So I think him um helping me to bring me back down to, you know, planet Earth and be like, okay, I get it. You have plans. Let's, let's, um, let's put it out like in three months. Okay. <laughs> let's not, let's not do it all in one day, you know? So he, he helps to ground me and remind me of that. And apart from that, I would actually say my clients who were once my clients and then they were my mm-hmm. students and then cut to now, they are actually, some, some of them are actually my very closest friends where I can share with them um, all of this because the time when I was down and I was in the hospital, the ones who actually showed up for me, besides my family, were my clients. They were the ones who came to the hospital to see me, which was very unexpected. Um, and I was worried about letting the business go for that three months with no news. And I was worried about how was I going to grow the business again? Are the clients going to trust me again? So seeing them come down to that hospital and that telling me, you know what, take your time, we are here, we're not going anywhere. It was uh, very heartwarming. So some of them have actually become some of my really good friends today. Oh, cool. Yeah, because um, <clears throat> having, you know, uh, listening to you, I just feel like, you know, there's a positivity to dancing as well. You know, especially if you have this condition, you have to be really positive. So do you think, um, right. you know, Teaching dance, uh, dancing, help you cope with the emotional aspect of the, the condition? Oh, definitely. That's such a good question. I've never been asked that. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> That's such a good question. Um, because in class, usually when I'm trying to explain a choreography, and if it's um a particular song that I really want the students to be able to emote the right way so that they could bring that out in that movement, I do... um have like a bit of an education session even during dance class where I would be telling them about okay this is what this song means because most of the time it's actually not in English right and some of my students they may not understand Hindi or Tamil or Telugu which yes. are all the different kinds of languages so I do explain to them the meaning of the song or sometimes even the background of how the music video looks and then I would um tell them that okay when you're doing this movement I want you to remember the time that you know, uh, someone told you that you weren't good enough, for example, you know, and I want you to bring that emotion out or bring this or bring that. So I do go further up to explain all this and I want them to feel that. So even in dance, if let's say it's a very happy song, I explain to them the feelings of being positive, you know, and then we, we basically like try to form a story in class whenever I'm teaching. So I would say that, yes, it, it requires you to be very positive And whenever I'm in that space, where I am teaching, uh, I feel my happiest. It's like for that one hour, I forget about everything that's happening. I forget about the fact that I have lupus. I forget about the fact that right after this, we have to go ice our feet. <laughs> all of those things. <laughs> Cold conference, I completely forget conference. about it. <laughs> yes, exactly. You forget about all that for a good one hour. So just like how it's an escape for the students who come to me for whatever that they are escaping from for that one hour, uh, in a way, it's also an escape for me from my condition because I love to teach. I really, really do. And if it's more so about dance, I really love sharing the knowledge that I have about the culture, about um, the the intricacies of it, of the craft. So I would definitely say that teaching is something that definitely helps me to feel happy and feel normal just for that, you know, just for that duration, I feel, because it's very important. Because otherwise... I don't really feel very normal in like not about 90% of my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so um, I have two, two last questions. Um, so sure. my next question is, um, based on experience now, what is the key thing you want to impart to our listeners and viewers who had the same condition as you? Mm. Uh, the main thing I would definitely say is to take your time. 
I think we are living in a time where we have social media and we constantly look at what other people are doing, you know, uh, with what they are doing with their lives. Some seem very happy, some are getting married or some have a new business or some just, you know, gotten like their first $10,000 sales. Like we see all this. And sometimes when we look at it, we start comparing it to what we are going yeah. through uh, with the stage of life that we are at. And that's not good because you don't know what happens behind the camera or, yes. you know, like what these people are going through. So I definitely say to take your time. And if it helps for you to um, really stay in that zone of not comparing, if it helps, unfollow those pages. You don't need to see it. You know, yeah. unfollow the pages, unfollow the people. It's actually a very good detox. I do that now monthly. <laughs> Any accounts that <laughs> I see is it, giving me that stress. I unfollow. Monthly detox, guys. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Monthly detox. Yeah, that, I, digital detox. That's it. Like, ooh, yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. Do it. I, th- I think it's important. And sometimes it's not that because you don't like the people. It's nothing to do with that. Nothing personal. It's not a personal yeah, attack. It's, about, it's just yeah. more that I don't want to see. It. Yeah. It's good for my mental health for me not to see it. And to work at your own pace. Sometimes we worry about, oh, if we don't do this now, is it going to affect later? And I always feel like the same opportunity that has come to you now, mm-hmm. it can always come to you again later. It may be in another form. It may be even better. You just have to trust timing and also trust that you are someone who's able to work hard to get to it. You know, I think as long as you have that belief, it shouldn't shouldn't be such a big problem. Okay. Okay. So my last question is, how would people connect with you? Uh, how would people... Um go to you to go to you and start dancing <laughs> can you tell our listeners yes. and viewers as well <laughs> yeah so we are huge on social media so that's where you know um and the instagram is run actually by me so technically if you connect with me on instagram um i like to keep the community engaging you know pretty much we have like an offline squad and an online ah, squad okay. so the offline <laughs> squad are the students who come to us we already see we have a face um the online squad are those who are very supportive online. We have a very good online community, actually, who I've never even met, but they've been there from the time we've started and it's been amazing. So do connect with us on Instagram at the Daisy Groove and you'll be talking to me so that we I'll get to know you as well and I'm always down for a chat. Um, another platform that we are on is also TikTok, which is fairly new. We've just gotten on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are, we are still trying to understand the platform, but yeah, we are on it. And yeah, you can reach out to us on that uh, as well because we are quite responsive. So you are pretty much going to get a reply for sure. And that's how we can chat more about what do you want to learn about? Um, what is your dancing pace like? Uh, I always try to personalize a dance class for the client itself. So Absolutely. it's definitely something that we can work out regardless of whether you have danced at all ever. So the um so what, your dance classes are they every day or uh, they can do like private um tutoring as well? Yes, we do private classes. Actually, majority of our clients at the moment are private clients, where because they are all busy um uh working adults as well. So sometimes a weekend class isn't the best for them because they just want to relax, right? Yeah. So I do have a lot of clients who live in uh, condos here in Singapore. And what they would do is they would gather maybe a group of five and then we would fix a class where I go over to their location where I teach them classes on a weekly basis. So it's it's a good way to wind down from a very tiring day at work and you just get to enjoy for a bit. So yeah, we do private classes as well. Otherwise, if you would like to join our regular weekly classes on the weekend, we have a class every Saturday from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. Uh, in Farrah Park slash okay. Little India in Singapore. So we have a studio oh, there. Nice. And yeah. right after that, 2.30 to 3.30 are our kids' beginner classes as well. Oh, okay. So Saturdays okay. are quite jam-packed with all the beginner classes, yeah. I see. Weekends are actually quite good because at least you can relax and chill out. I guess, like for Yeah, really, true, really true, dancing. true. And a lot of parents, they send their kids uh, for classes because then they get that one hour of me time, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> so we, we love it, we love it. We love all our students. <laughs> okay, so Farzada, thank you for being a guest uh, today. Um, so everyone, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this episode. And until next time, the next two weeks, see you. Bye. Bye.